hello welcome back so the first thing i'm going to do is tell you guys what i um uh, my plan of care go over that uh what i was assigned for this patient is uh abdominal assessment comfort management fluid management uh, meds and vital signs now My plan of care but I got a report go over that what I got a report was um, I'm gonna just say tell you the uh, objectives and subjective that uh, was reported um, as far as comfort the patient was saying she feel wiped out she had a, a appendectomy and um so she was saying she feel left out excuse me wiped out um she's very uncomfortable she's a three on a zero to ten um comfort verbal rating scale she's restless her room is hot the linens are scratchy the gown her gown is uh, often damp and the sight, the surgical sight annoys her. Um, for abdominal assessment, slight, slightly distended. Um, she has a ABD pad on her right lower quad. She has a Jackson Pratt on the right of the dressing. Um, she has some um, drainage. Sarah, I can never say this word either. Sarah Sarosa. You guys know which one I'm talking about. I can't say it. Um, hyperactive bowel signs and all four quads. I have abdomen soft and tender. Patient reports no BM since prior to admission. Uh, fluids. At her IV site, it is intact, non redding. The drain site is slightly redding. The skin is slightly tinted. Oral mucous membrane is moist. Um, that's that. Uh, and others, patient says she feels wiped out since surgery as a result. She wants to spend most of the time in bed resting, even though she's permitted to ambulate. Uh, and when ambulating, she is visibly fatigued and short of breath. Uh, she gets Percocet for pain. So that's what I got on report. So with that information, I went with comfort. Um, impaired comfort. Uh, was my NANDA-1 nursing diagnosis and my assessment, uh, patient data to support development of nursing diagnosis. Patient states the room is hot uh, in her gown and sheets um, are often damp. Excuse me, no, is her sheets damp? Let me go back and look at that. She say sheets are just her gown. Yeah, just her linen is scratchy and her gown is often damp. So I had added that right now when I was talking because I was going to add that to this, but I didn't put sheets. And I remember why I didn't because it didn't say that it was um, damp. Okay, so one, you have to have two assessments to support your nursing diagnoses. So patient states the room is hot and her gown is often damp. Number two, patient states her comfort level is at a three on the zero to 10 comfort verbal rating scale. So that's where I got impaired comfort. She's uncomfortable. Rationale for the selected nursing diagnoses. Patient states she is very uncomfortable 
and her comfort level is at three on the zero to 10 um, comfort verbal rating scale. If not addressed, patient may not assist in her care. That's what I came up with. Um, related factor, uh, I looked and seen what that was because um, I still was kind of unsure. And it said the related factor was because she has a fever, which I didn't even pick up. I mean, I did get the vital signs and report and her, she did have a fever. So um, they said because fever and um, limited mobility. Uh, so that's what I used. So I really have to work on that between tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> um, expected outcome. Patient will rate her comfort level at a seven or greater on the zero to 10 comfort verbal rating scale at end of PCS. My nursing interventions, one, you need two of them. Apply cold towel to forehead, rationale. Applying a cold towel to forehead will help to improve comfort by lowering the body temperature. Two, change gown as needed. Change gown and as needed. Uh, rationale, changing the patient soil gown will improve patient's comfort level now i didn't talk to a faculty advisor to and go over this to figure out if this was sufficient or not um but i think it sounds good um so and then um i said as far as it, the uh specific task her temperature needs to be rechecked, and I've said the uh, UAP can check the temperature. Okay, so in this situation, there was no um, interventions given. There was nothing in my assignment. Remember, I was saying if you um, just for your plan of care or use your interventions that you're already assigned. Um, in this example, I wasn't assigned anything, so I had to come up with my own. And um, that's that. So I will get started. And um, we'll go from there. Here we go. I'm Angela, I'm an Excelsior nursing student, and uh, I'm gonna go wash my hands first, and I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna identify you by your wristband uh, before we go any further. So I'll be right back. Washing my hand with soap and water. You only have to wash your hands with soap and water when you enter the room. You do not have to wash your hands with soap and water when you exit the room. You can use hand sanitizer. Okay. So, if you are going to uncover your arm to look at your wristband. Okay, Elena Azarova. Elena Azarova. Birthday, 324-1983. Good. Okay, so once again, I'm Angela, and I'll be uh, your Excelsior uh, student nurse today. Excuse me, my mind just went blank, and that probably will happen on site. You, your brain probably will just go blank, so you just have to, which is okay. Um, you just have to, and my my advice would just stop breathe and continue um so what we're going to do today the doctor has ordered uh for me to do an abdominal assessment 
um, but make sure you're comfortable. I'm going to uh, manage your fluid, take some vital signs, and we'll give you your uh, medication. Okay? Uh, I see your activity order is out of bed as tolerated with one assist. So uh, when you want to get up, please make sure that you push your car light and uh, let us assist you in getting up, okay? And you know how to use this car light? Yep, you just push that button. Yep, okay, and I'll sit it there and reach. Um, when you're in bed, we're going to keep your side rails up. Uh, I see you alert to ibuprofen. Gives you a rash. Gonna get some oral fluids as you uh, ad lib, which I believe is as like. I had to Google that because I couldn't remember what ad lib is. If it's not as like, um, then uh, comment below and let me know what ad libs, uh, what's that abbreviation for. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Okay. So, are you comfortable right now? Oh, on a scale from zero to 10, where zero is not comfortable at all, extremely uncomfortable, and 10 is very comfort, comfortable, where would you rate your comfort level? And that excludes pain, not pain, just, you know, how you just like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable for other reasons than pain. What would you rate your uh, comfort level? Four? Okay. Let me write that down. So your pain is a four. Okay. I mean, comfort level is a four out of ten. And what do you usually do to get comfortable? Like, what helps you get comfortable right now? The pillows? Okay. The pillow is too high right now. Would you like me to adjust that for you? We can, that's, that's a simple, quick fix. Okay. So you want it higher or lower? Lower? Okay. I'll help you sit up. Okay. So lower that for you under your back. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Okay, good. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, verify your... Uh, I'm going to um, verify that the solution that you're getting right now is um, what's ordered, okay? And, uh, just a minute. Let me see what you got going on here. Okay. Okay. Let's get some things out the way. Just want to check and make sure that the floor is not wet, there's no clutter, you know, everything's safe, everything you need is in your reach, okay? So, all right. Hold on to my son's monitor. See what it's doing. Be right back.
feel free to fast forward until uh, I get back in. Uh, this is very important though, that I can uh, see him while I'm in here. What's wrong with this thing? And we'll get a trip now in the middle of a video. Come on. There we go. Okay, we're good. All right, so what I would like to do is compare my notes to your fluid to ensure that we are getting what you're supposed to be getting, okay? Page 13, so you should be getting 0 0.9 sodium chloride, 0 0.9 sodium chloride, expiration November 19th. I just I'm just I just get in the habit of checking the expiration date. Um, it doesn't say anywhere in the documentation where we would have to check that, but that's just what I do. Um, check the uh, rate 125 milliliters an hour, 125 milliliters an hour, infusion control device, Oops. infusion control device. Okay. That's that. And I just want to check the tubing. Your tubing, I'm just checking to make sure there's no kinks or bubbles in your tubing. You understand why I'm checking to make sure there's no, I'm going to uncover your arm. Is that okay? Okay. Um, you understand why I'm checking to assure that there's no kinks or bubbles in the tubing. So yes, if uh, the doctor has prescribed your fluids to go in at a certain rate um, and to be done at a certain time. So if there are kinks in here, then that's going to stop the fluid from flowing and um, which would uh, compromise the order. So, little things like when you're moving in bed or whatnot, just periodically check and make sure that you're not laying on it, there's no kinks in it or whatnot. And this is system um, alarms also. So if you hear this alarm, then that means it's kinks or bubbles in there and it's stopping the flow rate. So um, if we don't come in here immediately, you can feel free to push the call light and say, hey, it's alarming and we'll take care of it, okay? So I'm gonna put some gloves on because I want to. Um, I want to um, touch your insertion site. Okay, I want to look at it and feel it. Do you know what I'm touching for and looking for? So when I'm looking, I'm looking for uh, seeing if it's any drainage and if it's red uh, and I'm touching to see if it's swollen. Um, those are some signs of infection. So we want to keep an eye on that and uh, make sure that that's intact. It's not bleeding. Um, it's not draining. And um, that's something you can do also. You can pay attention to it. Uh, and if you see any redding areas or uh, any swelling or drainage, you can let us know. If you feel pain there, definitely let us know and uh, we'll take care of that, okay? All right, so we want to prevent infection. So um, you're hot, okay. So one thing you can do for comfort, like if you're hot, we can always get like a towel to put on your forehead. We can pull the covers back. Uh, for not, would you like me to pull the covers back? Yeah, you can um, 
feel free to do, you know, what you can to, um, you know, get comfortable. So you can take the covers off you or whatnot. Um, we can adjust the uh, thermostat. Um, and we can, um, like I said, we can get you some, a cold towel on your head. And um, actually, I'm going to do that for you. And um, we're going to change your gown also, okay? All right, so that's that. Um, just want to make sure you're comfortable. And um, let's see. Bed is locked, low, rails are up. Uh, IV is fine. Let's see here. I like to refer back to my notes. Make sure we're on top of everything. While I'm checking, I may as well um, check your, uh, you have a Jackson Pratt, you're right. Okay, I'm just gonna move that for a minute. I took those gloves off. Um, I should have sanitized. That's what I gotta get in the habit of doing. Gloves before and at, sanitize before and after gloves. Okay, so here I'm gonna look at your Jackson. So, you had an appendectomy. Okay, so here's your, see your little sight. Okay, your Jackson Pratt. Okay, looks like it's about 50 milliliters in there right now. So I'll get the, at the end of the ship, I'll get um, a measurement and see how much um, came out. So you are, um, you are, um, I have to get, let me see, are we, your intake and output. So when you, uh, when you go to the restroom, um, it's a, a hat in there what we call it, is something that you can urinate in so we can keep track of um, how much you void. Um, so when someone is assisting you, they should know, but just help them assure that, help to assure that they don't empty it because I have to um, see how much you void. Also, uh, let me, if you drink something, please let me know. And um, I keep an eye on what you're drinking because we have to document that also. And um, at the end um, of my shift, we'll get intake and output, okay? All right. So, so I'm going at the end of the shift, I'm going to check the measurements of your uh, drainage in your Jackson Pratt. And I'm going to check the remaining balance of your IV fluid. And... Um, I'm gonna get your intake and out put. Uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna get your vital signs now. Um, I'm gonna set this timer for about five minutes because I believe that'll be 20 minutes where my um or she would have to check for my 20 minute check. And at this point I, I do believe um that this is where they check and make sure that you document it for your, uh, you put the indications for your medications also. Okay, so I'm gonna go get my uh, blood pressure cuff and everything so I can get your vital signs, okay? So are you good? You need anything before I leave out? Okay, here's your car light. Side rails are up, bed lock, low, good. So I will be right back, okay? Thank you. 
sun is moving. Okay, just getting comfortable. Okay, I'm going to set these items down. It's Angela, Excelsior Nursing Student. I'm going to set these items down so I can go wash my hands. Wash my hands with soap and water. All right, ninety nine point one. Okay. So ninety nine point one. It went down, that's good, because it was between 100 and 100, 102.6, and the last reading was 101. So I did that temporal. your oxygen level has been 98 all day okay so she checked my packet to make sure that my 20 minute check which was the fluid uh, was done and documented and um, I think to make sure that the medications had the indications it would have used for it.
count your costs. And I'll probably just do it for a full minute. I mean, you know, you can do it for 15 times it by 15 seconds times by four or uh, 30 seconds times by two, but I'm just gonna count for a full minute. Remember to um, put the site in which you got the uh, readings. So this will be my right, right radar. Count your respirations. Just relax. That's 22. We're going to get your blood pressure. I'm actually going to use that iron. Now, I wouldn't re normally reach over, but um, I got it kind of tight over there. So walk over there I mean I can I guess I could squeeze over there I guess I could squeeze over here so these big old house shoes are I'm trying to give you all the full effect of doing everything properly. Proper. So I'm using this iron because the IV uh, insertion is over there. So just rather do it here. Can you pull that curtain for me? The provide a little privacy because she's kind of exposed. Thank you. So, as we all know, the arrow where it says artery, that is where you want to you want to place this arrow above the artery. This arm place it there and you want to have this area exposed so you can um, listen here 
put the bell there. See if he stopped crying or not. So I like to, um, her last reading was 128 um, systolic. So I'll, uh, I won't go uh, no further than uh, 138, 148, like uh, 153. I, I don't go no further than like 15. We got 130 over 68. Let me go get him. If I have to pause, stop, and do a part two to this video, I will. We'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do a part two to continuation to this video. So I'll go ahead and upload this one. I just did the vital signs and everything. So um, those are all done. All right, thank you. Have to feed him. Huh?